back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. You're a great zombie. And good times here at the Waterfront Village. Thousands of passengers across the East Coast, of course, had to alter their plans. And we spoke to one kid who was trying to cope with the delay. I'm just sitting there on my iPod. It's just so frustrating. I want to be in Florida getting a tan on my back. Before we toss it back, we got to go to the Drew, the farm kid. <sighs> How you doing there, Pally? Right now, you know, I know he can't say anything right now, but you know what he's saying right now? E, 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 e <laughs> equals MC squared. Get the camera <laughs> off my face. I'll take this cantaloupe. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh Dan, don't I'd make, make a lousy him politician. cry. That's terrible. I love that kid. What did you think about the ride? It was Okay. Eric Hubbard was sitting in a friend's car eating lunch when Friday's tornado came barreling toward them. I was scared. I was finna eat a hamburger. It took it. I don't even know where it's at. It took your hamburger out hamburger of your hand. I don't know where it's at. Tell me about the whistles. The whistles go woo. When you want to woo woo, it's that woo woo. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the flows. They didn't trip off the flow masters. That and decoration, man. It's just yeah. for decoration. That's, that's it. it. And that's all, man. We do it for decoration. you have it on your car? Yeah, I got it on my car. It was being installed on their car. Some neighbors are saying way too loud. That's only in the morning. You're supposed to be up cooking breakfast or somebody. And so that's like an alarm clock. Woo, woo. How's it feel to get the power restored? It's been five days, hasn't it? You know what? It's, it's a... I'm so glad the power come back on because I was burning up. Lamasa Pace said she was thrilled to see all the power trucks rolling down her street, South Military. The whole street was lined up with them, with them cherry pickers and all them crew. I said, I said, you said hallelujah. I go like hot dog. Look at that, boy. Look at that thing. How well are you going to sleep tonight? You bet I'm going to sleep like a baby. Drink me some good old Kool-Aid and drink me some some cool big jug of ice or Kool-Aid and go to sleep like a baby. Kelly Dodson was asleep with a little girl inside their apartment on Webster Drive when so I was attacked by some idiot from out here in the projects. He tried to rape me. He tried to pull my clothes off. Well, obviously we have a rapist in Lincoln Park. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up trying to rape them, so y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. The attacker got loose and went out the upstairs window, but he did leave something behind. We got your t-shirt, you done left fingerprints and all. You are so dumb. You are really dumb, for real. You don't have to come and confess that you did it. We're looking for you. We, we going to find you. I'm letting you know that, so you can run and tell that, homeboy. Her screaming. I meet my McDonald's. I uh, come outside, I see this girl going nuts, trying to get out of her house. So I go on the porch, I go on the porch, and she says, help me get out. I've been, I'm, I've been in here a long time. And like I say, my neighbor, uh, you, you got, you got the, some big testicles to pull this off, bro, because we see this dude every day. I mean, every day. How long have you lived here? I've been here a year. Okay. You see what I'm coming from? Right. I barbecue with, with this dude. We eat ribs and, and whatnot and listen to salsa music. You see I'm coming from? Yeah. And you had no indication that there not was anything egg, going on? bro, not a clue. What was the reaction on the girls' faces? I can't imagine to see the sunlight, to be bro, around people. Bro, I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. <laughs>
<laughs> Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Thank you very much for your time. And either she homeless or she got problems. That's the only reason why she run to a black man. Charles, thank, thank you for being there, man. Curiosity leads to large crowds in Mobile's Crichton community. Many of you bring binoculars, camcorders, even camera phones to take pictures. To me, it looked like a leprechaun to me. I got to do look up in the tree. Who else in the leprechaun say yeah? Yeah! yeah! Eyewitnesses say the leprechaun only comes out at night. If you shine a light in its direction, it suddenly disappears. This amateur sketch resembles what many of you say the leprechaun looks like. Others find it hard to believe and have come up with their own theories and explanations for the image. My theory is it's casting a shadow from the other limb. Could be a crackhead that got hold to the wrong stuff and it told him to get up in a tree and play a leprechaun. We're going to get down to the bottom of this. Yes, yeah, still on there, guy. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, man. This guy helping to direct traffic says he's prepared for his encounter with the leprechaun. He's suited up from head to toe. This water's all smells right here. This is a special leprechaun flute, which has been passed down from thousands of years ago from my great-great-grandfather who was Irish. I just came to help out. Others just came to get lucky in hopes a pot of gold may be buried under this tree. I'm going to run a back hole and uproot that tree. I want to know where to go. Like, I want to go. Give me the go. I want to go. Man, them jokers was big. Size of a quarter dog on. Many said it sounded like nothing they've ever heard before. He said, Kapuya, Kapuya. And your boy that hell just came in. I looked at my, opened my door and I looked out my door and started hitting me in my head. I took out running, ran to my restroom and then I called my mama to see what she all right. Folks were told to stay off roadways unless absolutely, positively necessary. But they still came out to places like the Circle K gas station. I wanted donuts. David Grisham, the leader of an area radical Christian group, attempted to publicly set fire to the Islamic holy book. Snuck up behind him and took his Koran. He said something about burning the Koran. I was like, dude, you have no Koran, and ran off. I didn't make anybody stay here until 7 a.m. or 11 or whenever it is everybody finally left. I didn't make this kid pass out on my floor. People wanted to be here. That was their decision. Oh, bro, it's just like, dude, you get the best barrels ever, dude. Just like you pull in and you just get spit right out of them. And you just drop in and just smack the lip. Drop down, snap. And then after that, you just drop in. You just ride the barrel and get pitted, so pitted like that. I ain't no robbing type of person. I wouldn't do nothing to no innocent man. I've been robbed. I've been pissed and whipped. They got that on file. I'm innocent. I ain't do nothing. I don't know what's going on. All I know is my side of the story. I can't tell no other story. I'm innocent. And mama, I love you. P.O.P. All the day. Pray these all good pimps for a baby for life. Surveillance tape is catching a routine morning at this gas station on Bannister until chaos erupts. I was putting one more tap of coffee in my coffee cup, and out of the corner of my eyes, I saw two guys come in, one with a black hoodie and one with a white hoodie. And the guy with the black hoodie said, we want your money, everybody up front and down. And I'm like, oh, why did I need coffee now? The guy in the black starts coming down, and I'm like, don't look, don't look, don't look. So I'm putting my hair down, you know, and he comes right to me, and he goes, get down now. And I go, yes, sir. And I just drop to my knees. Then I heard, Boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh my God. So I back farther and farther away. And I think maybe I should faint, but I don't. And so then I'm thinking, count to 2,000 again. So I did. And then I go, me amigos, me amigos. Nobody said nothing. I'm like, oh my God, they're dead. Just minding my own business. Bam! Hit me hard right from the back. I was glued to my seat. I was like, Whoa! I could see the car in front of me. I was about to hit him. So I kind of veered off this way. As I veered off this way, the guy who hit me, Laid off that other way, and he hit the curb, flipped over, rolled over, run into the electrical pole, and I didn't know he hit the pole. All of a sudden, I kind of stopped, and I was like, whoa. And uh, the wires come down, boom, and then arc, arc, bam, that fire was coming everywhere. It was arcing, sparking, blowing up. I saw one arc, arc go from the corner of my van up to the car behind me. It was like a big rainbow, boom, and it was coming up, boom, boom, and I was like, shoo. So I, I opened up my door, I didn't touch no metal. And as I come up, I started to touch the top, 
and a little spark jumped out. I said, whoa! I uh, stepped out rest of the way. Lucky I didn't get burned more. So, crazy? Oh, it was crazy, dude. I was just sitting there, and I was like, oh! <laughs> Reality hits you hard, bro. Well, the police wouldn't let me go to through 100, 122nd, so I had to go around 119th and go... Um, and I was, they let me look at the, the lawyer's building. I know the vacuum cleaner man. He's seen my tits. Um, I know that's not going on TV, but it's true. It's true. I'm not here to lie to you. Um, I was trying to get a hold of him because I couldn't identify the business. That window got blown out. And I was trying to help the police figure out who to contact to secure that poor business. Yes, yes, yes. He must have been gravely hurt. He must have been badly hurt, injured. How, how fast do you think someone must have gone? I haven't been allowed to drive for three years, so I am not a good judge of that. Anything else you want to add about what you saw? You want to see my tits? <laughs> Louis? Who was walking there? But who else? I don't know how bad they are. Why don't they just walk the gutters? It ain't a far walk. It's just 38 miles. Why don't you walk? Why don't you walk the gutters? Can you walk the gutters a little more? I'll walk. Yeah, I can walk the gutters. Why don't you walk the gutters? I don't, I don't need to walk the gutters. Well, shit, no, you don't. Know. You're going to put everybody else walking the gutters. Why don't you just walk the gutters? All right, I want to go. All right, hang on. Let me do this one time. Man, let's go. Walk. How about strutting that ass? You'll be so goddamn fucking tired. The time you get to New Hope, you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be so goddamn fucking tired. By the time you get to New Hope, that you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be. Mm, mm. Well, what's made you? What's got you so mad today? Me? Yeah. Because everybody wants to run. Everybody wants to run. That's good. Run from here to Gunnersville. I'll walk. I'll be right behind them and see how far they can run. It's a chauvinistic pig attitude that you're gonna do something because you work at the arsenal and you got a fucking Mercedes Benz and you ain't gotta walk every day, so you're gonna get out and. Strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that, that ass. When you start walking, my friend, and you get 10 and 15 miles on the highway, you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be half dead by the time you get there. So it's a chauvinistic pig attitude that Clinton's got to strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass. And when you walk about 15 or 20 miles, you won't be strutting that ass. You'll be so fucking tired, you won't be hard to hold that ass up. Ooh. You won't be strutting that ass, strutting that ass.